Thermo Fisher, we do have uh, their uh, platform and molecular, but we don't use that for our uh, uh, ANA testing for autoimmune. Okay, got it. And just out of curiosity, do you happen to know which uh, Thermo platform you are using in your sister lab? Uh, so we so for the thermo we have the uh, ion S five plus which we use for NGS. We have the ion chef that's used for the library preparation for the NGS. Um, and then we recently also uh, got a, a capillary electrophoresis unit. Uh, uh, I think it's like I think sixteen for, uh, yeah sixteen capillaries. Uh, uh, from from them, so I don't know the exact model number. Okay, uh, so those are the ones. yeah, and I think for this study, we want to focus on the platforms that you would be using for um, autoimmune diagnostic testing. So I know you know, like the the sure. C platform from Thermo ABI, you you might be running like Sanger sequencing or fragment analysis. And of course, you know, the, the Iron Chef for that's, that's NGS work. But here we're, we're specifically looking for the panels that you would be using, um, or sorry, the systems that you would be using to test for, uh, um, you know, things like connected tissue disease or antiphospholipid syndrome, celiacs, thyroid disease, rheumatoid arthritis. So, um, it sounds like, okay. it sounds like those other platforms, like you said before, they're, they're used for other use cases. Um, so we'll just stick with the ones that are in use in your lab. Um, and that would be BD and Ortho are your, your two providers you said for, um, yeah, auto- most of the, yeah, most of it is done on the BD. Yeah. Okay. How did you end up with the BD system? Do you mind just sort of, you know, taking me back in time and telling me a little bit about, you know, how it made its way into your lab? And then we can jump over to, you know, considerations that you have, areas where you think things could be improved, that sort of thing. So um, maybe start by telling me a little bit about the system itself, how long it's been in place, why that was decided uh, to be brought in as opposed to the BioRad, which you said it was a little bit expensive for reagents. Just tell me the full story. Yeah, so for the, uh, we use BD system in the flow lab uh, for flow cytometry. And so uh, we have sort of uh, uh, agreement like system-wide with them for the equipment portion. And so we get, I think, uh, significant uh, uh, discount on the reagents as well as the system. Um, and I think that's why the decision was made to bring in BD. And how old is the system? I think it's a year old, maybe. I'm not sure the exact duration. Okay. Yeah, I think we recently acquired it. Got it. And do you happen to know the... Uh, like the model or any other details regarding the system that you've gotten from BD? Uh, I'm not as familiar with, with BD systems. Uh, I think you're the first person that we've talked to in the study that's using BD for this work. It's called the Backtech uh, ANA. I'm not uh, sure about the model number. Okay. Got it. All right. So uh, maybe once you're able to, um, maybe after we wrap up here today, if you're able to track down that, that information and shoot it along the email, that would be very helpful for us and being able to, you know, further drill down on, on these recommendations. Sure. Um, yeah. So then um, as far as uh, factors that you're considering uh, when you're choosing a specific autoimmune diagnostic tests coming from a specific manufacturer. So either, you know, Becton Dickinson or um, ortho. Um, what are the, the factors that you, that you consider to be the most important when you're making that decision? I know your, you and your, your two colleagues, you said before, are giving recommendations on, on performance metrics. Um, so maybe you can talk a bit about that as well as any other factors that you look into when you're deciding, uh, 
which diagnostic test you want to ultimately utilize. Um, sure, yeah. So it depends, obviously, on the... The most important is the sensitivity uh, of the assay. And uh, so, like I said, in our case, um, I mean, we cannot really... Uh, we try, like, 1 is to 80 is the uh, lower limit of... Uh, uh, detection but at the dilution but uh, we do uh, find it's not very sensitive especially in early stages so uh, so the the sensitivity is one factor the cost uh, of the test uh, in terms of you know uh, being able to do batch testing versus uh, individual so we most for mostly for the ANA we try to do batch test where we uh, uh, run uh, once a day uh, all the samples and then uh, it's uh, anything that needs a reflex testing will be also batched uh, based on the ANA screen. Uh, the other thing we look at is the uh, the accessibility in terms of you know uh, being able to uh, do have random access versus uh, uh, like which which lets you do uh, uh, continuous loading versus uh, being able to batch. Uh, in case you know for for stat cases, like we occasionally get uh, stat ANAs, uh, especially from uh, like sometimes with OBs uh, when from labor and delivery. Um, so in those cases, we would uh, like to have system that can give us random access. Um, and the other thing is to look for uh, integrability integri into the, your LIS or your, uh, uh, we use, you know, uh, Copath for the path side and then um, uh, SunQuest uh, Cerner on the lab side. So being able to interface it so that we can uh, directly send the results across the system is also something uh, that uh, we would want uh, from a system. Um, and then, uh, uh, obviously, the footprint, because uh, uh, if if it can be a benchtop system, it's much preferable rather than uh, standalone, uh, you know, uh, uh, which takes significant more space. So, I mean, that probably kind of are the top things that we are looking for. What does your system look like now in terms of in terms of size? And where is it? It's what, a bench top. It's a bench top system. Okay. And what is your throughput like? So, you know, how many autoimmune tests are you performing in a, in a day? Uh, you know, it sounds like everything would be coming to your lab across all of your various sites for autoimmune diagnostic testing. So how many samples are you typically running? Yeah, so for the ANA, we get anywhere from 35 up to 40... 550 samples a day, depending on, you know, um, the the workload. Uh, I mean, the stat results. I mean, stat cases probably a two or three, maybe uh, in a day. Sometimes it's just one, one or two in a day. Uh, but most of the ANAs that are reflexed, I would say it's anywhere from 12 to 14 or maybe 15 a day. Um, that get reflex. Got it. And you said normally you're you're batching, um, aside from those stack cases, which need to be run as soon as possible, obviously. So when you're batching, um, how how many samples are you are you batching at a time? I guess, and uh, how many separate runs are you doing each day? Uh, well, so we typically do one run. Uh, uh, in a day, and so we try to um, sort of uh, our uh, cutoff is uh, 1 p.m. for you know the next day's run. So basically, try to batch everything that comes, uh, and uh, because the processor, I mean the person on the AMA bench starts early uh, on the first shift, so we try to get everything um, on the instrument. Typically. Uh, I I'm not sure what the throughput is. I can again check and let you know. But uh, uh, like I said, around average 35.